स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया Hello everyone. This is Dr. Vishal Tevedi from Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering, IIT Guwahati. And what we were discussing, we were discussing about the biomolecule. And in this context, so far what we have discussed, we have discussed about the nucleic acids, and we have also discussed about the carbohydrates. In our previous lecture, we were discussing about the structure as well as the function of the carbohydrates and how the carbohydrates are being utilized in the different types of metabolic pathways so that you they can be able to utilize to produce the energy now in today's lecture we are going to discuss about the uh, another biomolecule and that biomolecule is the lipids so as you can see here is that the lipid biomolecules are required for the energy productions and uh, lipids are uh, you know been uh, as you can see that when we were discussing about the krebs cycles the lipids are been uh, run through the beta oxidations and that's how they are actually producing the acetyl coa and these acetyl coa are actually entering into the krebs cycle to produce the energy so the first question comes is what is lipid and what is the structure of a typical lipid so what is lipid so the first question is what is lipid and the lipids are the heterogeneous group of naturally occurring compounds including the fat oils steroid waxes and the related compound that are related more by their physical than by their chemical properties they have the two common properties they have they are so lipids are relatively insoluble in water and they are soluble in the non polar solvents such as ether and chloroform so what you see here is that the a typical lipid has the two component one it is has a backbone the backbone and then it has the side chains so these side chains are uh backbone is uh, mostly been present as the glycerol so it has the glycerol uh, backbone or the alcohol backbone and then it also has the fatty acid so you can have the three chains of the fatty acids so this is the chain number 1 so this is number 2 and this is the number 3 and this acid group is actually making a linkage with the alcohol what is present into the onto the glycerol and that's how it is actually forming a, a lipid molecule so what you see here is the three fatty acids are coupled with the three alcohol group what is present onto the glycerol so let's understand these uh, backbone and the side chain first so what is glycerol so glycerol which is also known as the glycerin is a trihydroxy alcohol so what you see here is the chemical formula of glycerol so ch2oh choh and ch2oh uh, trihydroxy alcohol as it contain the three hydroxyl group it can be obtained from the diet from the lipolysis of fat in the adipose tissue and from the glycolysis it can be utilized for the synthesis of the triglycerol phospholipids glucose or can be oxidized to produce the energy so glycerol glycerol can directly be taken up into the different types of metabolic pathways and that can be utilized for the production of the triglycerides phospholipids and even it can be converted into the glucose to produce the energy 
it is used as a solvent in the preparation of the drug as well as the cosmetic industry and the nitroglycerin is always been uh, produced from the glycerol and that is being used as a vasodilator. What is mean by the vasodilator is that it is actually going to dilate uh, the blood vessels. So uh, you can imagine that if somebody is having a blockage, right? If somebody is having the heart related or cardiovascular diseases, their blood vessels are actually going to narrow down, right? So their blood vessel is actually going to have the internal uh, clots and because of that they will get narrowed down. So if you provide the nitroglycerin, it is actually going to dilate these blood vessels and that's how the blood flow is actually going to be more in these blood vessels and that is actually going to give us some kind of relief to these patients. Uh, then we talk about the fatty acids. So fatty acids, uh, fatty acids are the aliphatic carboxylic acids. They have the general formula as RCH2NCOH. They occur mainly as a ester in the case of natural fats and oil, but do occur in the unesteroid form as the free fatty acid as transported form found into the plasma. So these fatty acids are either being present in the a sterified form or they are also present as a free fatty acids because they are being transported that way into the plasma. So when we take the food, right, the food is actually a complex lipid molecule and that complex lipid is actually going to be digested by the lipase and that lipase enzyme is actually going to uh, degrade the fat into the free fatty acids and these fatty acids are then being absorbed by the elementary canal from the elementary canal and that's how they will transport it into the plasma. Fatty acid that occur in the natural fats are usually the straight chain derivatives containing a even number of carbon atom. They may be saturated or the unsaturated. They may be saturated which means they will contain the no double bonds or they can be unsaturated which may contain the two or more double bonds. Fatty acids can be of many types. According to the nature of the hydrophobic chain, it can be saturated or the unsaturated or the branch chain amino fatty acids or the substituted fatty acids. Saturated fatty acids do not contain the double bond where the unsaturated fatty acid contain the double bonds. Uh, Saturated fatty acids, these are the examples of the fatty, saturated fatty acids. So, saturated fatty acid can be envisaged as a base on the acetic acid as the first member of the series in which the CH2 is progressively added at the terminal CH3 and COOH. So, you can imagine that the acetic acid is the first uh, saturated fatty acid. So, if the number of carbon atom is 2, then it is going to be the acetic acid or the ethanoic acid. The formula is CH3COOH. Now on this, if you add another molecule of CH2, then it is actually going to produce the butyric acid. So what you see here is the 4 carbon. So 4 carbon is butyric acid or the butanoic acid and it is actually going to be CH3, CH2, 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 COH. So accordingly, we, it could be 6 carbon, 8 carbon, 10 carbon and so. So fatty acids in the biological system usually contain the even number of carbon atom which means it can be uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 and so on and typically uh, 14 to carbon atoms are present into the saturated fatty acids. Uh, the hydrocarbon chain is uh, almost invariably unbranched in the animal fat. A few branch chain fatty acids are also being found into the plants and the animal sources. Then we had talk about the unsaturated fatty acids as the name suggests unsaturated fatty acid means it is actually going to have the uh, one or more the double bonds right and the unsaturated fatty acid could be a monosaturated fatty acid or to the polysaturated fatty acids. Monosaturated fatty acid is going to contain either only the one double bond and they are going to be called as monoethanoids or the monoenoic. Whereas the polysaturated fatty acids are containing two or more double bonds. The configuration of the double bond in most fatty acid is cis. So there is no trans fat, uh, double bonds. The double bond in polysaturated fatty acids are separated by at least one methylene groups. 
the systematic name for a fatty acid is derived from the name of its parents hydrocarbon by the substitution of oic for the final e for example if you have the c18 saturated fatty acid fatty acid it is called as the octadecanoic acid because the parent hydrocarbon is octadecane so in the fatty acid the last e can be just uh, replaced with the oic so for example the c18 saturated fatty acid is known as the octadecanoic acid uh, because the parent hydrocarbon is octadecane similarly the uh, the uh, c18 with double bond it uh, it is called as the octadecanoic acid with the two double bonds the it is called as the octadecanoic acid and with the three double bonds it is going to be called as octa deca trienoic acid now let's talk about the classification of the lipids so lipids as i said you know it's going to have the uh, the backbone which is either going which is going to be a uh, alcohol backbone and then it will also going to have the different types of fatty acids so these lipids could be of three different types it could be the simple lipids it could be the compound lipids or it could be the derived lipids in the simple lipids you can have the examples are like fat oil and waxes where you are going to have the glycerol as a backbone and then you are going to have the fatty acids in the compound uh, lipids you can have the uh, phospholipids glycolipids and the sulfolipids so here you are going to have the some kind of derivatizations onto the uh, onto the side chain as well as onto the backbone and that's why it is called as the compound uh, lipids and then you have the derived lipid these are the special class of lipids where you are going to have uh, the modification in terms of the backbone as well as the side chain so it's going to be alcohol it going to be a fatty acid or it can be going to be steroid or isopinoids so depending on the backbone the derived fatty lipids could be of different types so let's first understand about the simple lipids so simple lipids are the ester of the fatty acid with the various alcohol you have the two examples one is fat the other one is called as a waxes the fat the ester of the fatty acid with this role the oils are fat in the liquid state so oil is the fat which is actually been present in the liquid state whereas the fat could be the solid then we have the waxes the ester of the fatty acid with the high molecular weight monohydric alcohol that is called as the waxes one of the class example of the fat is the triacylglyceride so triglycerides so triglyceride is one of the fat molecule right and the triglycerides are the ester of the tri, uh, the glycerol and the fatty acids it could be the mono triglycerides or the di triglycerides so mono or di acyl glycerol whereas one or two fatty acids are steroid with the glycerol and found in the tissue they are naturally occurring fat and oils are mix of the triglycerides they are insoluble in water their specific gravity is less than 1 and they are consequently all fats float into the water which means they are they are very light so they are light and because of that they are actually going to be float onto the water oils are liquids at 20 degree they contain the high proportion of the unsaturated fatty acids fats are solid at the uh, room temperature and contain the saturated uh, long chain fatty acids so if it is containing the unsaturated fatty acid it is going to be the uh, it, it is going to be liquid and that is going to be called as oil if it is containing the saturated fatty acid then it is actually going to be uh, solid so and that solid is going to be called as the fat the triglycerides are the storage uh, form of the energy in the adipose tissues what is the function of the triglycerides it is a major lipid in the body and the diet it stores fat provide about the 60% of the fat resting energy needs uh, it is produced for the insulation and the protection and it is actually also be required for the carrier of the fat soluble compounds and it is also been a sensory qualities like the flavor as well as the texture apart from that we can also discuss about the wax right so they are the ester of the higher fatty acids with the higher monohydroxy aliphatic alcohols they are very long straight chain of the 60 to 100 carbon atoms 
they can take up the water without getting dissolved in it and they are used as a basis for the preparation of the cosmetics, ointments, polishes, lubricants and the candles. So, you know that the wax is all used for the production of the candles. In nature, they are found on the surfaces of the plant and as well as the insects. So, wax uh, in the plant or in the case of wax uh, insects, they are actually been utilizing the waxes only to repel the water molecules. Now, let us talk about the compound lipids. So, compound lipid, the ester of the fatty acid containing group in addition to the alcohol and a fatty acids. So, in this case you have the phospholipids. So, lipid containing in addition to fatty acid and alcohol a phosphoric acid residue they frequently have the nitrogen containing bases and the other substituent. For example, we have the glycerophospholipids or the sphingophospholipids. So, in the phospholipids instead of uh, in addition to the alcohol base uh, or the fatty acid you are also going to have the phosphoric acid as the uh, additional molecules. Then we can have the glycolipids. So, glycolipids, lipids containing a fatty acid, sphingosine and the carbohydrates are called as the glycolipids. And then we have the other complex lipids, lipids such as the sulfolipids and aminolipids, uh, lipoprotein are also found under this category. So, let us talk about first the phospholipids. So, uh, in a compound lipid, I have taken an example of the phospholipids. So, based on the nature of alcohol, it could be of the glycerophospholipids or the sphingol phospholipids. In the glycerophospholipids, you have the glycerol as the alcohol group. So, what you see here is, you this is the backbone, right? This is the backbone, what you see and the, onto the backbone, the first carbon as well as the second carbon is sterified with the fatty acids, whereas the third oxygen is being uh, there is a phosphate group which is attached. Onto this phosphate group, you can have the different types of functional group which is going to be attached. And depending on the functional group, you can have the different types of phospholipids. You can have the phosphatidylcholine. If the X is being replaced by the uh, choline, then it is going to be called as the phosphatidylcholine. If it is replaced by the ethylamine, then it is going to be called as tholamine. So, this is called as PC, this is called as PE. Similarly, you can have the phosphatidyl serine, you can have the phosphatidyl inositol, phosphatidic acid, cardiolipin, plasmogen, little activating factor as well as the phosphatidyl glycerol. Similarly, you can have the sphingophospholipid. So, in the sphingophospholipid, the sphingolol is the alcohol group, for example, the sphingomyelin. So, in this case, you are actually changing the backbone also. So, these are the different types of uh, lipid molecules what is present, right? So, you can have the different types of uh, functional group, the X, what is can be and that is how you can have the different types of phospholipids. Then we have the sphingophospholipids. One of the classical example is sphingomyelin. So, sphingomyelin is where you can actually have the uh, the sphingosine which is being attached to the one of the carbon right so sphingolipids and uh, on this you can also have the X molecule and this X based on the this X you can have the different types of sphingomyelin. So, the backbone is sphingosine instead of the glycerol in the case of sphingomyelin or sphingophospholipids. A long chain fatty acid is attached to the amino group of the sphingosine to form the ceramide. Uh, the alcohol group at the carbon 1 of the sphingosine is terrified to the phosphocholine producing the sphingomyelin. So, if you have the phosphocholine, then it is going to call as a sphingomyelin. And the sphingomyelin is an important component of the myelin of the nerve fibers. Then we have, we have to discuss about the function of the phospholipids. So, phospholipids are the major component of the cell membrane, mitochondrial membrane as well as the lipoprotein. They participate in the lipid absorption and transportation from the intestine. They play an important role in the blood coagulation like the phosphatidylserine, right? And the required for the enzyme action, especially in the mitochondrial electron transport chain. Uh, choline act as a lipotropic agents and then the membrane phospholipid act as a source of arachidonic acid. It act as a reservoir of the secondary messengers such as the phosphatidyl inositol. So, this 
Phosphatidyl inositol is important for the calcium signaling in the case of the many type of uh, you know responses uh, there is a con, uh, phosphatidyl choline which is actually going to be uh, responsible for the release of calcium from the endoplasmic reticulum and that's how it is actually going to induce the calcium signaling. It act as a cofactor for the activity of the lipoprotein lipase and the phospholipid of the myelin sheet provide the insulation around the nerve fibers and the dipymetoyl lecithin act as a surfactant which means surfactant means it is actually going to function as the detergent. So these are the things we have discussed about the phospholipids. Then we can also discuss about the glycolipids. Uh, glycolipids differ from the sphingomyelin in that they do not contain the phosphoric acid and the polar head function is provided by the monosaccharides or the oligosaccharide attached directly to the ceramide by an O glycosidic linkages. And uh, so this is what you see uh, and the number and the type of carbohydrate moieties present determine the type of the glycosphingolipids. Uh, there are two types of the glycolipids, neutral glycosphingolipids or the acidic glycosphingolipids. What is the function of the glycolipids? They occur particularly in the outer leaflet of the plasma membrane where they contribute to the cell surface carbohydrates. Uh, they act as a cell surface receptor for the various types of hormones and the growth factors. They play important role in cellular interaction, growth and development and they are source of the blood group antigens and the various embryonic antigens and the G1 act as a receptor for the cholera toxin in the human intestine. Then we will talk about the sulfolipids. Sulfolipids are the uh, another uh, compound lipids. They are cerebrocytes that contain the sulfated uh, galactosyl residues. They are negatively charged at the physiological pH and they are found predominantly in the nerve tissues and the kidney. The failure of the degradation caused them to accumulate into the nerve tissues. So lipid is actually being digested or met, being metabolized uh, by the different types of pathways, right? And if that doesn't happen, then the lipid is actually going to be stored into the different types of uh, org uh, organs, right? For example, the nervous tissues, uh, livers, uh, and all other kinds of tissues and as a result the lipid, lipid storage is actually going to be responsible for the different types of diseases because lipid has to be utilized for the energy production or other kinds of functions. If it doesn't happen then the, the, the huge quantity of lipid is actually going to be accumulate into the cell and as a result it is actually going to cause the different types of diseases. For example, it can cause the Tay-Sachs disease. So Tay-Sachs disease is happening because there is a deficiency of hexaminidase enzyme and because of this there will be a, an accumulation of the GM2 ganglocyte and it is actually going to be responsible for the mental retardations, blindness and the muscular weakness. Similarly, you can have the Fabry diseases, you can have the metachromic uh, leukotrophy and uh, there are other kinds of uh, fats what is going to be stored into the different types of uh, uh, parts of the body. Then we have the some more uh, like Gaucher's di Gauch disease, the Gaucher disease where you have the beta galactosidase, the enzyme which is going to be absent and because of that the lipid glucosyl ceramide is going to be accumulated and it is responsible for the enlarged liver and the spleen and the origin of the long bones and the mental retardation in the infants. Similarly, you have the Neiman Pick disease or the Farber diseases and the that is there you can actually have the different types of uh, fats what is going to be stored and mostly it is responsible for the different types of mental as well as the uh, other abnormalities into the different types of organs. So this is all about the uh, simple lipids as well as the compound lipids and then talk about the derived lipids. So within the derived lipid you have the special type of lipids. So within the derived lipid I have taken an example of only one uh, disease, uh, one lipids which is called as the cholesterol. So cholesterol is a uh, 
different structure and the different biochemical properties and does not follow the rule where it has a backbone and then fatty acid and all that. So, but the cholesterol is uh, occurs both in the free form and as well as in the ester forms. In cholesterol ester, the hydroxyl group on the position 3 is esterified with a long chain fatty acids. The cholesterol esters are formed by the transfer of acyl group by the acyl transferases. In plasma, both the forms are transported in the form of the lipoproteins. The plasma low density lipoprotein or the LDL is the vehicle of the uptake of cholesterol and the cholesterol ester into the many tissues. The free cholesterol is removed from the tissue by the HDL molecules and it is transported into a layer where it is eliminated from the body either unchanged or after conversion into the bile acid in the process known as the reverse cholesterol transports. So, this is the structure of the cholesterol what you see here it has the different types of rings and then it has the this uh, chain right. So, what is the function of the cholesterol? So, cholesterol is widely distributed in all, uh, all, all cells of the body but particularly in the nervous tissue. It is a major constituent of the plasma membrane and of the plasma lipoproteins. It is synthesized in many tissue uh, from the style CoA and it is the precursor of all other steroids in the body including the corticosteroids, sex hormones, bile acid and the vitamin D. So, major function of the cholesterol is that it is a major constituent of the lipid what is present into the plasma membrane and it is also being responsible for the biosynthetic pathway or the biosynthesis of the different types of the corticosteroids or as well as the sex hormones. It is also responsible for the biosynthesis of the bile acid and the vitamin D3. Uh, cholesterol is a major constituent of the gallstone, right? So, you know that the, there are stone which are being formed into different uh, organs, so whether the stones are formed into the gallstones or the gall uh, onto the kidney, right? So, the cholesterol is a major constituent of the gallstones. Its chief role in the pathogenic processes is a factor in the genesis of a disease which is called as the atherosclerosis of the vital arteries causing the uh, cerebrovascular coronary and peripheral vascular diseases. So, cholesterol is an important lipid and it can be transported into the blood by the help of the LDL. And whereas the HDL is a, a lipoprotein, a high density lipoprotein which actually can carry the cholesterol or the high amount of cholesterol into the blood, uh, into the liver and within the liver then it is going to be metabolized to produce the bile salts and these bile salts are being utilized to uh, help in the lipid uh, uh, digestion and other kinds of things. Uh, so, this is all about the uh, lipids what we have discussed so far, we have what we have discussed, we have discussed about the general structure of the lipids where we have discussed about that the lipid is made up of, of a alcohol backbone and the fatty acids. This alcohol backbone could be of different types and depending on the alcohol group, uh, the lipids could be of different types. Similarly, the side chain or the fatty acids also could be of different types. The fatty acid could be saturated fatty acids or to the unsaturated fatty acids. And uh, depending on the different types of functional groups, what is present on to the, uh, the alcohol backbone, the, the lipids could be of the uh, you know, different types like the phospholipids or glycerolipids or the sulfolipids. And then we also have the special class of lipids where we have the cholesterol and the other lipids. So, with this I would like to conclude my lecture here. In our subsequent lecture, we are going to discuss some more biomolecules which are important for the cellular functions. So, with this I would like to conclude my lecture here. Thank you. Mm -hmm.